Namaste, Soul Circle. I'm Stephen from Arcana Mind Body Spirit, located in Toronto, Canada. And on today's video, we have a special treat for you. As an introduction to the chakras this month, we wanted to show you what a chakra balancing could look like. We take a breath for each chakra, say a mantra for it, and check in with our energy before moving on to our next. At the end of today's video, we will enter each other's energetic field through bodywork and hands-on healing to remove any blockages and help us get to our most optimal flow. This is a service that we offer through Arcana, so if you're interested, check out our website at www.arcanamindbodyspirit.com. And be sure to like and subscribe below now so that you don't miss any of our upcoming chakra series. We'll be focusing on one chakra per week for the next few months, with our goal being your overall health in your mind space and body temple. Here we go. And we are back. We're outside in the amazing garden. Can you believe this is November? Yeah, it's really hot. It's <laughs> the side of me is real toasty. Yeah, we had already packed up the backyard thinking that it was it was time. It was winter yeah. time. Yeah. So with that, let's talk about our setup a little bit. So we will be working through the chakras. Down on this end, I have a red calcite. Um, this is a really good one for your root chakra and getting embodied. Um, it's actually very energizing as well for, for that chakra. So we're gonna keep that down here on this end. We have a set of chakra stones um, aligned up like our Shashumna here. And at the top where we get up to our, our upper chakras, we've placed our Synergy 12 stones. We have, a, uh, I think we have seven of them up there, which is a lot. That's gonna be good for some journey. We have some Moldavite which we got from Czech Republic. We have Olivian Tektite, we got a Danbrite, we have Scolocyte, Phenakite, Tanzanite, and a Petalite. So a lot of things on there. Uh, for our generator, we chose a quartz pillar with the Angelephos symbol for transformation. And out of all of the Angelephos symbols, this is the one that's the anchor. Um, in a lot of spiritual practice, it's important to understand that transformation has to take place in the depths. Transformation doesn't just take place uh, up here. So we always call that the anchoring stone. So that's what we're gritting with. And then we are each presenting one more stone to pop on our grid there. So <laughs> what are you working with? Mine is tucked away in my breast. <laughs> Volto uh, calcite. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here she be. She lives often <laughs> tucked between my breasts. It spent more time in your breast than I think anywhere. <laughs> anywhere else on any grid. Yeah. Uh, it's my body grid, right on, right near my heart where it, um, where it rests. So I think this one is a good one for me, um, especially um, with a lot of the healing that I'm working on uh, in terms of digging up and re expressing and releasing um, different traumas and different pains and different things from my past um like giving new perspective to that and like i said kind of using that to rebuild not to as a means of shaming or forgetting um or like just putting it aside but like actually using it to propel me into where i need to be um so i think this is a good a good stone for that kind of healing and uh so yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm bringing love it yeah. And what about you? Which one are you bringing? Well, um, <laughs> we need to keep stones Any anywhere place. we want. <laughs> uh, I am bringing an ammonite. Um, <laughs> if you've never actually seen an ammonite before, these were living creatures that have been fossilized. And their shape is the Fibonacci spiral, the Fibonacci sequence, which always represents that all transformations, all ideas, everything, even us had to start with a spark and it was a spiral that moved until we get to where we're going so i'm working with that right now so let's put them on the ground funny remember we, were, we mentioned this earlier funny story oh yeah we found we found out doing some research i found out that this was originally found in um italy and the year leading up to us going to italy i was obsessively 
it was in her bra it. for weeks. Literally, like I, 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 yeah. Like, and, it, and then when it wasn't with me, it was instantly like, "Where's where? Oh, here she is!" Yeah. And then just like tucked in, I slept with the stone. It was part of me, and then we ended we up in Tuscany. Yeah. We manifested Italy. We really did. We really so, did. Yeah. Well, here's to manifesting another trip. Yeah. Somewhere a soul beautiful. trip. Yeah, we need a soul trip. With the way that things are going, it, it's not necessarily like that is what I'm manifesting this year, although I will absolutely take a trip to Europe. But <laughs> um, that's what, if that's what, is, is that, that's where I'm called to go. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has I to will go, go. <laughs> I will be the martyr. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will make that sacrifice. Um, but uh, let it be the trip to truly transforming um, and transitioning my heart to where it it needs to go and feeling that I'm ready to take that. So mm. so we're going to invite you that if you need to pause and go collect some tools, um, always keep in mind, you don't need tools. Tools can just uh, help add a level or layer of correspondence. Some people feel that they operate better using different tools. So if you don't have anything to get, then just continue on. I would say if you can somehow have a, a a plant or if you can be outside please feel free go outside but if you can somehow get closer to the earth that would be really really awesome for this if you have a notebook to keep by a lot of the times when this is done um, there's always messages that can come your way so I would say to grab that otherwise I think it's time we get going so making sure that we're sitting up nice and straight aligning our central channel our shishuna all the way up some deep centering breaths for our chakras. We'll be taking one deep breath for each chakra. If you've ever done any pranayama work, you'll want to inhale for three, hold for three, and exhale for six. If you're an experienced breath worker, you might want to inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for eight. Otherwise, if this is your first time, you may want to inhale for two, hold for two, and exhale for four. Listen to your body. You might notice that as we move up through the chakras, you might feel that your breath gets deeper and allow for that. This is why we do the work. We're going to be working with nine chakras today. We'll be working with our earth star chakra root, our sacral solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, our crown, and our soul star chakra. And our hopes and intentions for this is to ground ourselves and release any heavy energy for transmutation, as well as allowing to make space for the higher energies to come. chakra. Inhale. I am divinely connected to the guardians below. Root chakra. Placing one hand on your root chakra. Inhale. 
inhale. I am safe and live my truth unafraid. Sacral. Inhale. Passionate, creative, sexual person. Solar plexus. source of divine energy. chakra inhale I speak my truth and my truth Intuition is divinely guided, and I trust my choices. Crown Chakra. connected. Soul Star Chakra, placing your hand in the air. Inhale. I 
I'm connected to the guardians above me. Returning your Shashumna, straight alignment, awaken your body, your spine. As you inhale, feel the energy from your earth star chakra all the way to your soul star chakra, running in a beam of pure white light up your central channel, releasing any blockages, taking note of any blockages. Inhale. Continue breathing. Now take a moment and check in with your body. If you need to write down any observations. Yeah, so the, yeah. these lower and core areas were definitely easier. Um, the heart chakra is a huge focus and just trying to take the living out of just my head and bring it to my heart and feel it in my body. So I'm just aware of it. So I think it was a little bit easier or more like clean it felt. And then moving up, um, it was harder. So I felt like I was in like shorter breaths and a little bit more like all over the place a little mm -hmm. bit, um, a little bit more foggy, um, a little bit more, yeah, just cloudy. Yeah, cause I feel like I'm trying to not disconnect from the upper ones, but like not be so in there. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've always just been like, I'm good yeah. there and then I needed to work here. So these are like flowing and moving and like working. And then like these are kind of like, just kind of like lost in the, in the air. So yeah. I, yeah. What about you? What were the, what were your processing? What were you feeling? I'd say one of the surprises for me was throat. Yeah. I often don't um, associate myself as someone who has trouble speaking my truth. I, I am a very outspoken person. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was something that came up there and I, I actually, I'm not sure what it was. I'm gonna have to do some work there. Um, and root, right now root's a big one for me. Mm -hmm. Like the, the root systems that I belong to, I, I know I have work to do there. So if, like I, I yeah. when I was doing this, I had to actually think like, you're trying to lead a ceremony. Like I can't just stop and do breath work on this for like an hour. Cause in theory, knowing how we would practice, we could have spent an hour on each of these. So, I hope you guys were able to uncover messages for yourself. Um, usually if you get uh, short of breath, if you're working on breath work and you get somewhere and you feel like you don't have the same amount of um, relaxation or, mm -hmm. or, or deepness, you know that there's a blockage there. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I remember a teacher said once is, you know when you're sitting and you're in alignment, you'll probably get somewhere and you'll be like, and other parts of your body are gonna start kinking in. You'll be like, oh, like even if you're working on a lower chakra, you might, your neck might start going or your head might start going. When you have to actively check out of the work you're doing, that's like a fight or flight mechanism that your body's like, you should live there, you should work more. So we are going to now move forward into our healing session of this, and um, we are just going to time lapse this next session because it usually takes some time. Enjoy. <laughs> See you on the other side. You're on the other side of healing. Mm -hmm.